What do you see? Most likely a blank region of the night sky. But don't believe your eyes. You're looking at thousands of glowing objects. However, the only way to see them was using Hubble. In 2012, scientists focused the telescope's mirror at a fixed point and left it in that position for 10 days. Hubble kept taking pictures, which were then combined. As a result, millions of ancient galaxies appeared in the photo. They would be impossible to see even with a ground-based telescope. And that's not the only time Hubble made people doubt what they see. However, its time is gone. Hubble's official program was completed in the summer of 2021, after 31 years in orbit. Although it's still operational, the machine will have to deorbit. And since Hubble cost hundreds of times more than any ground-based telescope, scientists and governments are debating whether such expensive projects are even necessary. In this video, we'll find out can images taken by Hubble turn out to be a lie? What's the last thing it'll see? And most importantly, do we need such expensive telescopes in the future? Let's look at the pros and cons. How did this all start? Hubble was assembled by engineers from at least five different companies and institutions. George Marshall Space Center was given responsibility for the design, development, and construction of the telescope. Goddard Space Flight Center was given overall control of the scientific instruments and ground control center for the mission. The optics company Perkin Elmer was commissioned to design and build the optical tube assembly and fine guidance sensors for the space telescope. Lockheed Martin Corporation engaged in the construction of the spacecraft for the telescope. Collectively, they devoted considerable efforts to you won't believe your eyes to collect gigabytes of blurry photos. You can't tell whether these are gas clouds or a painting by watercolorist Joseph Zbugvich. The truth is that in 1990, at the beginning of its work, Hubble's main mirror was afflicted with a spherical aberration. It means that the focus of light was shifted, and Hubble couldn't take and send clear pictures of distant objects to Earth. At that point, a billion and a half dollar project was under threat. The mirror had to be fixed. Three years later, a space fix-it team fitted Hubble with glasses, equipping the mirror with a corrective optics device so that the telescope could see better. The mission was one of the most complex performed up until that date, involving five long extravehicular activity periods. But that didn't remove the need to send maintenance teams into space. In 1999, three out of six orientation-maintaining gyroscopes failed. In just two weeks before the launch of the repair shuttle, the fourth gyroscope failed. Hubble lost the ability to focus on objects and was entirely useless for some time, until the expedition replaced all six of Hubble's gyroscopes, a fine guidance sensor, and an onboard computer. There were five such expeditions, and they would be impossible if the engineers didn't originally design Hubble to be maintained in space. However, for the same reason, the telescope got more expensive even after entering orbit, sending blurry images. Do we need another one? I guess that's an argument against Hubble. But what about its accomplishments? After the faults were eliminated, Hubble got a second chance. Over the first 15 years of its work, it provided over a million images of celestial objects, stars, nebulae, galaxies. The new photos made it possible to see what used to be blurred and unclear or even invisible. Hubble showed how the universe began. It provided the first image-based surface maps of Pluto and Eris, the second dwarf planet after Pluto. The exact age of the universe was determined. It's 13.7 billion years old. Thanks to Hubble, 
The whole world was watching when the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 hit the surface of Jupiter. Hubble was the one that bagged an unprecedented close-up view of one of the universe's oldest known galaxies. The images taken by Hubble literally evoke a spiritual response from people, like masterpieces of world art. But everything it takes pictures of actually looks completely different. We have to figure out how exactly Hubble's camera works. It's inherently black and white. However, the telescope has a set of light filters, the Hubble palette. It appears that the finished image is a combination of three images in different color ranges. The red channel of the palette gives a purple-red color. The green channel gives a pure red color. The blue channel gives an emerald color. The images are processed through the use of local brightness adjustments. Then they're combined and converted to RGB images. But the thing to understand is that the colors aren't real. When taking true color photos, let's say with a camera, you wouldn't believe it, but the bubble nebula would be red. That doesn't mean that Hubble is deceiving us, it's just that it can see in other color ranges. It's certainly worth the money spent on it because it shows what we can't see by ourselves. However, another essential part of the process of creating a photo is the mirror. And it was the main troublemaker. The element, weighing more than 800 kilograms, was made of quartz glass, a strong material resistant to the effects of the space environment. But the mirror polishing process lasted almost two and a half years. The initial deadlines were missed, and the budget was significantly exceeded. At that stage, the project's total budget increased to $1.175 billion, and as you you recall, it wasn't free from defects. Do we need another Hubble? Probably not. But not only the launch and maintenance cost money, we also have to figure out how to dispose of Hubble. It's been in orbit for over 30 years. And although NASA states that the telescope is in excellent technical condition, its successor is waiting in the wings. It will be the James Webb, scheduled for launch in December 2021. Yes, Hubble's official program has been completed, but it will remain in orbit until 2030. Then six tons of its mass will burn up in the atmosphere, and the remaining five will plop into the Pacific Ocean. It's a bit sad without considering the fact that Hubble's been in space longer than the established period. Hubble was supposed to remain in orbit until 2014 and get replaced by James Webb. But the considerable over-budgeting and the slippage in Webb's construction schedule forced NASA to postpone the anticipated launch date, so Hubble had to stay in orbit. In June 2016, its program was officially extended for five years. For the continuation of the mission, funding of over $190 million was allocated. And now all those billions will be drowned in the ocean, which is also environmentally unfriendly. Here, opinions may differ. Some would say we can manage without images of comets or nebulae. And I agree, we'll be fine without it as humanity. But as explorers, eternally thirsty for knowledge, we can't do without things like Hubble. So my vote is definitely yes. And yours?